Hello and welcome to Nollywood Fellow, a channel where I talk Nollywood. And today I have a guest with me. So for the first video of 2024, I have a fellow critic, Godwill, who also has his own channel, Madsen's Reviews. I'm going to leave the link to his channel as well in the comment, in the description below. So Godwill, thank you so much. Let's jump straight into it. Which, uh, what movie or series are we talking about today? Thank you very much, Rijit. I really appreciate this. It's a new year and we're getting into the best of the critics. We're going to be doing a lot of things and I hope that we'll have a lot of um, um, collaborations like this. So let's jump into the business of today. We're talking about war, wrath and revenge, right? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And war, wrath and revenge is a sequel of Sons of Caliphate. If you've not seen Sons of Caliphate, check that out on Netflix. It's very, 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 very interesting. It has about two seasons with 13 episodes each. It's very interesting, right? So right quick, we're not going to waste your time. We're just going to go straight to what we're supposed to do today. And just like I said, War, Wrath, and Revenge is a Netflix miniseries that was produced and directed by Dimbo Atia and written by Karachi Atia. What an interesting thing. Dimbo Atia and Karachi Atia, husband and wife in the same movie, as the crew, an interesting stuff, right? So Karachi Atiyah and Aze Yuga was the writer and the series, each of the episodes runs for about 30 to 43 minutes. I mean, no episode is less than 30 minutes and no episode is more than 43 minutes. Cumulative watch hours, if you want to sit down at the same point and watch this particular series, set out four hours for watching this series. It was shot precisely in Abuja, right? That is where the series was shot. So just to give you a preamble, uh, a summary of what war is. War is a continuation of Netflix, just like I said earlier, Sons of Caliphate. It tells the story of the challenges new faces in pursuing a gubernatorial seat. That's from my own perspective. That's what I can summarize, right? And the sitting governor being a threat to news in divorce. The sitting governor was just on his neck and all of that. The film explores some areas, which I'll list out here. I don't know whether, Sujit, you would have something to talk about this. The film explored the areas of power of love. And for me, I see it playing out with regards to Binta. Binta having her initial motives towards these three guys and at the end of the day, falling in love with Nuhu. I mean, it was an excellent portrayal of what love can do. Also, it portrays and it tells how betrayal happens within friends, right? Which we saw that in Sons of Caliphate, just like I said earlier, you can check it out. Check out Sons of Caliphate on Netflix, then you can understand more of what we're talking about, war. So it talks about betrayal. We can see in this particular series, War, Wrath and Revenge, we see that happening with Binta doing, being betraying Nuhu with regards to the trust and all of that. And we can see the same thing happening to Koda and Alicia. Koda betraying Alicia and all of that, the lies and all of that, right? So it is actual portrayal of the ups and downs with regards to betrayal amongst friends, among cliques. And also the movie portrays, I mean, it, it, it looks at the area of political crimes, blackmail, and at the same time, godfatherism. Political crimes, you can see the sitting governor doing what he did in Kowa community just because he needed to blackmail, um, just because he needed to make sure that people are destabilized so that he can win election. And at the same time, blackmail, sending Diko to blackmail Nuhu just because Nuhu is his uh, running mate and all of that. That is what politics is all about. And Nigeria, I mean, this happens a lot. Also, we look at the, as the movie explored the aspect of godfatherism. You can see that uh, Binta and Nuhu was taken into custody at some point. We had to make some influential call through the presidency to get them out. I mean, it is actually the depiction of reality, which was very, very interesting, right? And I really love those aspects of the uh, series. So not to bore you with much talk, and I'm going to allow um, Sriji to talk about some things, which we are going to go into the positives. I'll just give a brief of the son series Sons of Caliphate, right? So Sons of Caliphate revolves around three friends who grew up together, and at the end of the day, some greed and challenges made them have distrust, betrayal, and at the same time, they had this parental influence that came in between them, right, that separated them. And not forgetting Binta, who had her own grievances from the childhood to hunting to bring down these guys by all means, right? Yeah, that was what Sons of Caliphate talked about. And the series was produced by Ebony Life Films, Ebony Life Studios, where Mo Abudu is this uh, executive producer. And it was directed by Kenneth Gang in some episodes and some season, and uh, Dimbo Atia in some episodes, right? It had two episodes, two seasons, just like I said earlier, 
13 episodes for each of the uh, seasons. So let me uh, allow CG to lead us into the positive than the negative or any other thing you want to say about based on what I've said so far. Okay. Uh, well, here I have to admit that uh, I was a bit too lazy to check out Sons of Caliphate. So uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Godwill, for uh, giving me an intro into it. I, I actually thought I should watch it before, uh, you know, reviewing uh, War, but then 26 episodes, I was like, uh, it's okay. So I just skimmed through the <laughs> <laughs> review of it. Yes, but, it, it's actually interesting. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, uh, to be honest, I was never, uh, I was never going to watch any Nollywood series. But then I got uh, people asking me to review. Uh, it started with King of Boys, and then Far From Home, and Blood Sisters, okay. and uh, all of them have been so good. I was like, um, yeah. So when I saw the trailer of uh, this Wrath and Revenge War, I was like, I totally have to check this out. And I have to say that it. It did live up to my expectations. Uh, yeah. What I loved was the pacing. You know, there's there's never a dull moment. The screenplay is very yeah. tight. The screenplay is very yes. tight. It's it's very well written. Uh, you know, one thing moves on, there's another twist, and then moves on another twist, and that is very well done. Uh, talking of writing, I must mention dialogues now. Uh, one thing, one one pet peeve I do have with Nollywood is that the dialogues are never that punchy you know uh well here it was the other way around here it was just especially the dialogues that uh you know rama sadau had they were so good and they were so punchy so to the point uh i think the last time a nollywood movie wowed me with dialogues was uh that gabriel lafollen one uh what's it called coming from insanity yeah so okay af okay af after coming from insanity uh, this is a movie where the dialogues have wowed me. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I, uh, I, one thing I do not like generally is acronyms and Wrath and Revenge, actually, it is a forced acronym. But that being said, I think it was a smart move because in today's age, you should be able to search things up. And if the series was just called War, it would be very hard to, you know, look it up or search for it. Uh, I'm sure on Netflix also there'd be many other things that pop up if you write war. But with but giving it an acronym, I think was a really smart move, uh, you know, on behalf of the makers. Uh, also, I like the it's it's a visual treat. You know, starting from the very intro sequence where you okay. have the chess boards and and everything. It's it's that's so beautifully done. And in the movie, there is this scale, there is grandiose, and uh, the way it's shot, you know, it's uh, these huge palatial houses. And uh, like you said, uh, Northern Nigeria has been well brought to screen. Uh, and I mean, that's from an outside perspective. Uh, I can, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's just a nice visual distinction from what I usually see. So yeah. uh, how how accurate that is, is something that maybe I won't be able to uh, comment on. But yes, the distinction is there and it's beautiful. Uh, and one thing that that is definitely uh, great here is that this series is all about woman power. And this is one thing that I, I applaud Nollywood for on a whole. Like however good, okay. bad, ugly movies are, one thing is that is consistent is strong female characters and this movie and Nollywood has strong females behind the camera in front of the camera and I think yes, that is amazing that when I said strong female characters of course you'd be talking about Rama Sadao's character and uh, ASP, uh, ASP, ASP, ASP yeah. Miriam acted by uh, Douglas what's, what's her name? uh bikia graham douglas <laughs> so yes yeah. actually yeah so so when i say strong characters you would think of these two characters but if you look at uh, a relatively docile alicia she's also a strong character she is vulnerable in the moment she is going through a tough time but what a strong character so those are things that i i i really loved about the series and uh, I guess you've covered most other points about uh, the interesting aspects that it touches about in terms of politics, in terms of the power game and 
uh, other aspects. So any other positives that you would like to add? Yeah, actually, you really have covered them, right? Sons, I mean, uh, war, even from Sons of Caliphate, it, it actually had that great dialogue, right? The dialogues would go straight, it's in accordance with how the, uh, the, 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 the performance is. So it was actually great. No, just like you said, no cumbersome talks. They are just straight to the point and all of that. It was really great, right? Another thing I liked about is how they portrayed the Hausa culture. I mean, the attention to details in this particular movie was really captivating. I really liked all those aspects. If you go into how they showed the Emir Palace, I mean, the behavior of the Dogaris, the Dogaris are the guards in the palace, by the way. So the behaviors of those Dogaris were actually great, right? And I like some parts where they were throwing some slangs in regards to Diku. I mean, it was actually great. And that's why it's still related to dialogues, right? Sometimes they'll be like, so uh, Hondantasha. Now that means an old Agbero boy. This is relatable to Lagosians. Person where they Lagos go understand what they they talk. <laughs> <laughs> An old Agbero boy. Sorry, you won't understand that. Just leave it that. Leave that to us. <laughs> what what thing they happen? You I see, just wanted I to show. I can hear up. your. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually showing up, and I can feel that. Don't worry. When you come to Nigeria, I will take you into Lagos Street. Then you understand what I'm saying. The negative. So the continuity issue. I just. I think there are a bit of. Um, there are two points in episode one where I saw some continuity issues. Right. So uh, a few scenes that had. Um, I mean, continuity issue, you could see somebody talking and had, having a certain gesture or having a certain position. And when the camera turns to another angle, the person's position is not the same. It's, it gives you that disconnect in your mind as if, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like as if yeah. it's just a normal picture collage where you just pick up this picture, pick, pick up this picture, and it's not realistic. You understand what I'm saying? I see that yeah. in two places. And again, in addition, one thing I said earlier, which I'm going to repeat again, is the fact that there's this disconnect from uh, Sons of Caliphate season two and war. Even though they were telling us that it's a continuation, can I say it was a continuation of Sons of Caliphate because it's a continuation of the story. However, there's a bit of disconnect with regards to what happened in Sons of Caliphate at the end there and the continuation in this particular series. So I think uh, there's that, um, they were supposed to at least link us up a bit, right? Yeah, there are characters that were ignored, the characters that were removed, I mean, in this particular series, based off of purpose and based on some things like Khalifa and all of that, that was actually uh, not in this particular series, based on the accident and all of that that they mentioned. How, uh, however, I feel like the storyline had this disconnection with Sons of Caliphate. Sons, uh, war is great, but the storyline deviated a bit from Sons of Caliphate. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. I'll I'll get to my negatives. Uh, first, <laughs> gubernatorial elections. It's like <laughs> for some reason, uh, all all Nollywood thrillers need to have an election for governors. And if I ever meet oh. a governor from Nigeria, I'm going to think that you know this guy's evil. He's he's stamped over dead bodies to reach where he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, and Nollywood has <laughs> no. me thinking. So Nollywood has me thinking. So he may be the nicest person on the earth, but. Uh, you know, if he's a if he's a governor from Nigeria, Nollywood has me believing he's gone through a lot of scheming at least. So that is that. I I mean, yeah. If you if you actually think about it, most of the thrillers that have come out, there's always been a gubernatorial uh, an election for the governorship. You know, so that is something that has uh, me a bit. You know, another problem I felt was I uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, people coming back from the dead. You know. So a person who's believed to have been died and that person reappears uh, and that too, he was linked with very powerful people. I mean, the, the powerful people would have done the cross check as well to see that, to make sure that he is the person who died, you know. So I, I felt that, that was a bit of a stretch. I, I was thinking at least his father being such an influential person, he would have at least looked into it if, you know, he had died, you know, so uh to to have convinced people like that i guess you know that didn't sit well with me i think that you talked about power and influence and Diko has a little bit of power and influence that is why it is possible for them to for the writers to show that Diko is back again because Diko never his money never got finished right he gave it to the girl he loved and he said go handle this for me and the plot for him to, to for, for what happened to him in that particular series was planned by both he and the girl you understand 
And watching it carefully, anybody who is very smart would understand that there is no way, there is no way what happened to Dico at that last episode would have happened to him based on the fact that he is the mastermind behind what the operation is. How will it happen to him when he is the mastermind behind the operation? I don't know whether you get it. So based on that, he has the money, he has the influence, he has the reach. So it's possible that he can be able to fake his death. Uh, another thing I had is um, many of the plot points were uh, a bit familiar, but given that I'd still say it was overall uh, a good series. Uh, let's let's move into the performances now. So uh, first, of course, Rama Sadao. Is it pronounced Rama or Rahama? Rahama Sadao. Rahama Sadao. Okay. You, do you know what the name means, by the way? I don't actually know what the name means. I know what it means. It means mercy. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's a it's an Arabic word. Uh, we use it in Hindi okay. as well. It comes from the Arabic word rahim, which means mercy. And uh, and for uh, someone whose name means mercy, she has played a merciless woman so amazingly. I'm a fan. I, I've never uh, been a fan of Rama Sadao. Maybe I haven't seen good movies of hers. But I was always a. But she actually movie. acted. She actually featured in one of your Bollywood movies. I've forgotten the name, but she actually featured in one of your Bollywood movies. She uh, actually speaks Hindi. Yeah, she speaks Hindi, so she actually okay. featured in one of your Bollywood movies. She, I, I know she's coming up in a in a movie with uh, Hamisha Damija, the Namaste Wahala producer. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So that's yet to come, I guess. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, I have to say that uh, she's, she's really blown me away over here. Uh, as Binta Yeah, actually, Kutigi. Rahama in the character of Binta Kutigi was really great. She really passed across her dialogue perfectly. The deliverance with regards to her performance was just exceptional. I mean, for me, she is my best character that I, yeah. I, I can say it's in this particular um, series. My best character, it's Binta Kutigi. Yeah. Uh, the next would be Mofe Duncan as uh, Nuhubula. Mofe Duncan, that guy is a different person entirely. He played that Nuhubula very, very perfectly. At the beginning, from Sons of Caliphate, he was that confused, scared guy that cannot approach a girl. And when Diko approached the girl, he came to take over and betrayed them and all of that. It was just crazy. But here in War, Wrath and Revenge, the guy became that powerful man who is after helping the people. And he genuinely actually wanted to help the people. However, yeah, it is he... what it is in the movie. He looked really genuine over there. Uh, one, one, one performance I felt really strong was Patrick Doyle as uh, General Loco. He is uh, such Patrick a, Doyle. When, when an evil person is so soft spoken, it just makes him even more cunning. And uh, you, yes. you see that General Loco, and you're like, man, stay away from this guy. So that's how well the the character was. The the, the, the performance, Patrick. Was. Patrick Doyle in that character was just a different thing. And as much as I love his character, I think the, the, he's the only character that has to transform himself, that has to change his voice and has to behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Not because they want him to behave mm -hmm. in another way, but they gave him a character that has a voice that he has to mimic. I think he was mimicking someone or so, right? Yeah, he was trying to mimic someone because his character was more of control of the Kowa community and the Kowa gov government house. And he determines who enters and who comes out and all of that. That was in the beginning. That was in a prior to, in the Sons of Caliphate. However, here in war, the character lost his power because of the EFCC Wahala he had in b before. And here, I think they just brought him back to come and have that reconciliation and all of that. That's what they came to have in this particular film, in this particular uh, series. But then I still feel that Patrick Doyle did very well in that character as Loco. He did very well. But that is mimicking that his talk at some point, it became like it wasn't real. Why I say this is because of the differences. So in Sons of Caliphate, he, the way he spoke in Sons of Caliphate was more than this one in war, right? So I think there was that little bit of difference with regards to his performance and regards to his different no performance was okay but the way he spoke there was a bit of difference which made me feel like the guy was not holding up to the voice and the mimicking of that voice that he was supposed to hold on to he he wasn't stable with it all right uh let's move on to bikia graham douglas i think she did a 
phenomenal job as Miriam Katum. Uh, like, of course, uh, Rama Sadao had uh, did a great job. But if you look at Rama, she had a consistent uh, sort of uh, character uh, graph. While with uh, this particular character, there is, you know, you, there's that stern policewoman, there's that strict mother, there's that vulnerable woman, there's a woman who's on the receiving end of uh, circumstances, and there is this loving mother, and she has played every part to the T. I think uh, she is the standout performance for me over here. Uh, of course, okay. Rama shines, but... Uh, you know, through in in a subtle way, Bikia takes the cake for me. I get your point. So Rama, maybe I looked at Rama because Rama is at, on the spotlight, and so maybe if she does, maybe some glitches, I might not notice that. But rightly, as you said, SP Miriam acted by uh, Graham Douglas. Seriously, it was great. I can't really talk much about this because it they, they gave in the character a lot. They gave the character a lot. Just like you said, the challenges in workplace at the at the lower end where she had to face the, the, the bosses, her bosses, and coming back home, a loving mother whose son is just a crazy boy <laughs> that is not listening. I mean, it was just a whole thing on its own and coming back to her place of work where she had to deal with those couple that even though they're doing some wrong things, they don't want to admit and all of that. At first, she had the trust and had the belief and later on, she lost the trust because of what happened and all of that. So I think the character was great. In fact, the point where she had to fight off those bandits, I mean, that point was really great because it was believable. For me, it was actually yeah. believable. And you could see her taking in, you see her in action, it's like, this is a real life situation. So it was actually believable. And I think she really did great in the character of ASP Miriam Katon. Yeah. Uh, then there's Teresa Adam as Alicia, who was also a good actor. Uh, I don't know why I haven't seen her a lot. I, I think I've only seen her in My Village People before this. Uh, she she yeah. had, she's she's she looks gorgeous, and uh, she's done a good role. Uh, uh, a, like I, like we said earlier, uh, the strong woman who is vulnerable in the moment, and she's played that very well. I'd say. Actually. Alicia Kama, I at some point was in her shoes. I mean, I watching her character, I just fell into her shoes at some point. Like, is it a feminist? Okay, how will I put it? Yeah, she really loved the guy, but if she would marry this guy because of what the predicament she's into, what, first of all, she would lose her company, and first, second of all, she would lose her personality. So mm -hmm. I think the character was pro properly designed to consider what really a woman should think before you jump into the proposals. You could not, if you look at it from the beginning, Buba Koda was going to do what actually he intends to do. Right. Yeah. And later we, I believe that if left to that, the writers knows that left to that, I mean, the writers made it that left to the beginning at where Buba Koda intended to do the proposal. She was going to accept, but when the circumstances of the airplane crash and all of this came up, she couldn't because there are a lot of things at stake. Her legacy, company, and all of that is at stake. So she couldn't just run off to a man just because she wanted to protect herself, forgetting the sweat, the company she has built with her sweat and all of that. So I think it was a great character and it really communicated a lot, even though she wasn't she wasn't present in the old um in Sons of Caliphate. Alicia Kama is a new character that was introduced in this war. And I mean, the lady is just a boss lady. For me, that's what I called her. Just like I said earlier, she's in the midst of challenges and having the pressure to either get married to Buba Koda or lose, his com lose her company and all of that. Uh, Teresa Idem Isemin really did great in this particular character of Alicia Karma, actually. All right. Uh, now let's move on to uh, Governor Sanus Sanusi. My, ah. my, my Kudi Cashman. Is that how you pronounce it? My kudi, my kudi is a pron it, it's an it's in Hausa language. My kudi means cash man, somebody who has money. That's just oh, meaning, okay. right? Okay. You get money, you get money. Now what did they talk with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. You understand? Money. Mr. Money is, is a different <laughs> person. Ashake, now nah, Ashake, you want to talk about now, nah, Mr. Money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So so yeah, yeah. With regards to that guy, I mean the guy was good. In that character 
actually i didn't look at that guy very much i don't know why but even though i like his performance right i like what he did and one thing that was off for me was what patrick doyle how did patrick doyle pull of what he did in that office with regards to the governor precisely mm. you understand i don't want to say some things you understand but yeah, how he was yeah. able to pull of that pull of that Yes, in, in the, a very in the secure office. environment like that, that there are supposed to be securities, two four seven. There are supposed to be um, CCTV cameras and all of that. I think that's the another aspect that the producers didn't look at that was not yeah. convincing at all. Yeah, for me, I always like to see. It. Yeah, go ahead. I was just saying that because there's another thing also. The the final uh, thing where uh, Teresa, where Alicia comes and uh, you know talks on camera about uh, all all the scams and everything that's been happening and when yeah. the, the way she outs them uh, that also was not really convincing for me i mean i i don't think channels would uh, lap her up and okay uh, okay all of this is happening i know it's 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 cinematic liberty that happens to give a yes, nice yes that's boost, it but yeah uh, it it wasn't very convincing but then you can cut them some slack okay yeah all right uh, uh, yeah but that that, that aspect that aspect, I think um, there are gossip channels. There are channels that are actually, yeah, just like you said, based on the kind of personality she is, she owns the biggest um, airline in Koa, biggest mm -hmm. aviation company in Koa. And so it makes it easier for anybody to listen to her. And she's, mm -hmm. you understand, that's one justification that I think, a, a, I think press can allow her to speak. Any television channel can allow her to speak. For instance, let's say Tony Elumelu just comes up and wants to pass a message or want to say something. Whatever was happening, let me not lie to you, the press people are going to listen to him. Irrespective of who is talking, I mean, irrespective of who is behind directing, they want to hear what he has to say because he's a well-known name in Africa, not only Nigeria. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for kind of character put on Alicia, I mean, the kind of power Alicia has, as the MD of that particular aviation company that is recognized in the world, definitely somebody will want to listen to what Alicia is saying. But if it was a commoner, then we might now say, mm, the directors or the uh, news persons, or can we say the producers of that particular show, or that part they would have take caution, taken caution in listening or airing it immediately, right? They would have said, okay, let's record this, let her on screen it before we air it. But when it's a prominent person, they won't have a problem airing it because they know that those people have their backings and before they come up to the screen to say anything, they would have done their research properly. So I think with regards to that one, in my mind, I'm kind of being considerate and I'm understanding that. Mm -hmm. The only thing for me that, that I didn't see them showing it as plausible is how uh, Patrick Doyle in the character of Do Loco would get away with what he did in that governor in that office places. that i you I understand in as much as he's very influential you cannot just enter governor office and do what you did unless you sent your boys and all of that and if dismantle cameras and all of that then we mm -hmm. can now have it believable one challenge we always have is the development of such scenes at least such scenes should have been i mean some development should have been done to show that uh he sent his boys to remove camera he sent the boys away before he did what he did but it wasn't shown no development to that scene no prior you understand? So I think that it was just a bit of awkward yeah. and a bit of unbelievable. All right. The last uh, actor we'll talk about is, how do you pronounce this? Ifani? Ifani? Kali? Ifani. That's the Ifani. name. Ifani really, really was good. When he took up that role, I mean, it wasn't him again. So the guy wore the role like a mask. He wore the character like a mask. That's what I can say. Because if you've seen other of his movies, you'll be wondering, is that him? Yeah, yeah. You know what I, I'm saying? I, I, I yeah, so the guy, the guy really wore the character as a mask, and it was really interesting seeing Ifai Nikalu in that character of Buba Koda because I can see him as a serpent. <laughs> yeah, the character was absent in Sons of Caliphate, right? Yeah, but okay. here, he's a small cabal in the Kowa community. Cabal, you understand what I mean now? He's a small manipulative yeah. guy that has hands in the presidency that can influence anything in Kowa community. So, Based on what they were showing here, I think they were trying to replace, even though they are not replacing Koda with, uh, they were not replacing Loco with Koda, but at this point, they were showing that Buba Koda had power 
that can be compared to someone like Loco in this particular series. So the guy was really good. The guy really passed across believable performance. I yeah. mean, his actions were really great. I love that aspect. That, in fact, the betrayal that came from this booba code was even the shocking for me. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I was also caught in the act. I mean, I was also caught with surprise. Like, yeah. what the fuck? What really happened? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. that's, 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 that's exactly, that, that was very well put. I mean, he was, that's how good he was. You know, uh, that's how, how convincing he was. He was just the character. Yeah, Boba Kot, that was really, really convincing, very right? Very nice. And very manipulative. Because, yeah, Binta had the hunger for power. And when the guy realized that, and Binta had the hunger for power and revenge, even at that point. So when he realized that, he just allied with Binta, uh, Binta uh, Kutigi, Abi Binta Bula. Yeah. So she, he just quickly aligned with that person. And all of a sudden, they, because some people in the presidency needed something sorted. And, you know, all of this hula balu was just because of the diamond in Kowa village where the whole wahala is coming from, right? Mm -hmm. And so everybody wants to have part of the cake. It was only Nuhubula that was left in the dark. Otherwise, yeah. everybody was fighting for that. And Nuhubula genuinely had the interest of the people at heart. And that's what, one thing I, I think they tried to convert the character from his, from his ugly behaviors in Sons of Caliphate to a bit positive behavior in this particular series war right i think they tried the writers tried to give us a bit of a good side of nuhubla all right uh, so uh, any any parting comments any anything you'd like to say in conclusion okay okay so for me mm -hmm. it was actually a great series right war is an extension of sons of caliphate that really stood out right and think it gave me a better perspective even though just like i said earlier there's that disconnection in the storyline that did not connect well it seems like there are two different stories that we are told even though they were trying to connect it so that is the only challenge however the aspect they explore with regards to power and influence was really really plausible right it showed what big men can do and sometimes when you have the money, your mind is changed and you can go extra miles to do some rubbish just because of money, right? And the influential people are always not considering the people, I mean, the poor masses. That is one thing. Because there's something about, something, a line that local passed, he said, what is this thing with poor people and morality? I think I might have uh, quoted yeah. in a different way, but yeah. that is what he was meaning. What is this thing about poor people, people more? meaning that it is only the poor or only the broke. Yeah, that's what he said. Only the broke remembers morality. But then there are people that are influential. There are people that are up there that still mind how the society should be run morally, right? So I think the movie really, uh, the series really, really, really communicated a lot. And just like I said earlier again, I will rephrase that. One thing I liked about the series is the conversion of Binta from that aggressive, revengeful person to a soft heart for her husband, even though she's still after power and all of that. But that conversion is one thing I looked at and I was like, it's a communication to everyone. There's nothing that does not go back. There's no point of revenge always holding on on revenge. If you can allow your heart to have a bit of love, you will realize that love can wash away all those negativity in yourself right and i think they really portrayed it well in this particular series war okay uh so all in all i'd say that uh the series is not flawless it has its flaws it has uh, uh yeah. you know it it has plot points that are already seen but still given all of that it is a roller coaster right and it is done beautifully it's the way uh it's just a journey in which you're you're taken along with and that is beautiful the the punches that come in through the dialogues the the turns that uh, you know the sudden turns that come in uh the 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 twists the the sequence of events wow. everything makes it totally worth watching so this is something i'd, I'd highly recommend and on that note, that this is me, Nolly Goodfellow, signing off. Thank you so much, Godwill. It was amazing. Mm -hmm.